Hey guys, Harv here, and today is the day that I'm going to finally, finally design a planetary lander. Uh, that is a lander that can be jettisoned from, you know, our main command module craft, and it can go down into an atmospheric planet, soon to be coming in point seventeen version point seventeen. That is, um, and what it needs to be able to do is it needs to be able to land and get back into orbit in order to be rescued and transfer the crew back into the main the command module ship basically the thing that's going to take them home and I've been working on this for ages too long <laughs> way too long because I mean I've got loads of problems with it for one thing uh, I've decided that it makes more sense to have the lander as a an, as an eject and uh, can't speak as an ejected part <laughs> It makes more sense to have as as an as an why can I not say that sentence? It makes more sense for it to be as an in, an ejected part. Okay, you know, screw it. It makes more sense to use a Jeb kind of capsule. Um but because they weigh the same for testing purposes, I'm just gonna be using this. Uh but the point is if it gets ejected from the ship, you can't have any decouplers on it. So if it gets uh, if this was ejected from our main ship, you know, that's a bad example. If, say, for the purposes of the video, not saying this is practical, so you probably shouldn't try it, but if that was ejected from, so this is the main ship, if that was ejected from the ship, that decoupler would disappear. So it needs to be a single stage atmospheric planetary lander. And obviously we only have one planet to test on, so it needs to be able to climb out of Kerbin's gravity well and get back into orbit. Man, this is it's an engineering challenge and a half. And so today is the day where we try and succeed in making at least a working version. I mean, we have several constraints, right? Anyway, we can get rid of this and Oh, this and this. The constraints we have are the fact that it needs to be one stage, um, which means we can't jettison parts. And the other constraint is, I mean, that's fine. I mean, it's easy. Right, I could make one in literally a few seconds that's capable of getting out of the atmosphere without in one stage, right? Two, three... Right, that can get out of the atmosphere. I know that. That can get into orbit. Fine. I know that to be true. I'm not going to bother testing it because I'm sure most of you know that's, that's capable as well. But the thing is, it needs to be attached, preferably on top, because that's the centre of gravity, of on top, right in the middle of our command module. And you can't attach with aerospikes, so that would make it into next best thing would be one of these, but that's not enough to get into orbit, I don't think. Also, it's really big, really wobbly. How is that going to land well? You're going to need landing legs, and we can't use these because that's too tall to use them. So we're going to have to use these, which is just more weight. Um, and so on and so forth. And uh, and like, where are you going to put the parachutes? Around the edge? More weight, you know. So we need to make it kind of as as compact as possible, definitely not as tall as that. Thank you, Harvey, from six hours ago for introducing the video. This was going to be a live commentary of us designing together a atmos an atmospheric lander. Uh, sadly, that did not happen. Well, it did happen, actually. To be precise, it happened for around two hours. It took so long to get a good design that I thought I'd just... Oh, God, I thought I'd just uh, do a post-commentary video like I usually do. So sorry, live commentary is coming in the next video, not this one. So here we have all the landers, all the lander designs that we tried. First one didn't work because it didn't have enough thrust to weight ratio. This one didn't work because it used a booster because boosters don't work and it didn't have enough fuel. Boosters don't work because if they're jettisoned from the craft, then they start firing immediately. So yeah, that one didn't work because it didn't have enough fuel, this one didn't work because of booster and not enough fuel, this one didn't have any vectoring so it needed RCS and it uses a booster. Booster seemed like good, such a good idea at the time, I can tell you that. Not enough fuel, booster, uh, not enough fuel in general, 
nearly, nearly did it, this one, air breathing engines, air breathing engines, this is the way to go, air breathing engines, and this is why this one worked. So, using air breathing engines for the ascent, obviously, uh, unfortunately air breathing engines aren't perfect for the descent, so we're probably going to have to do something about that. But yeah, uh, so they get as they take you as high as they can at relatively good speed, and then you can start the vectoring liquid engine. And we have enough control. We don't need RCS for our Jeb's cabin, which is the cabin we're going to be using. That's the Mech Jeb and Empty Command module put together cabin. Uh, it's got plenty of vectoring because it's got air breathing and a vectoring engine. So you don't need to worry about having RCS on there to control it. And it seems to have enough fuel, because if you think about it, the air breathing engines get you pretty high, pretty fast, using a fraction of the fuel. And then you've got uh, almost four tanks full of that beautiful fuel for the vectoring engine to play with. So basically just tested that, and we got it into 85 and 70 kilometer orbit. That is good. That's definitely high enough for it to be picked up at. You know, 70, 70 would be high enough for it to be picked up at. Probably actually be easier as well. <laughs> but yeah, so the next step from there, having got this design, is to slap a ladder on it, slap some parachutes on it, and let it fall to the ground as if it's just come from orbit. And we'll try and land this and get it back into orbit, see if we can. Now, what's the problem of air breathing engines? They're not particularly strong. <laughs> That's one of the main prob problems. The other problem is that they can, they take a while, I think it's called spooling, they take a while to respond to the throttle. So there's some delay in that. Which is not useful when you're trying to do precision landing. Uh, because these are so weak, you're going to have to land at under, what, two meters a second? Uh, if you're going to land on them, and you know, even if you accomplish that, sometimes things go wrong. <laughs> but we landed, didn't we? We landed fine. Nothing broke off. Nothing exploded. Doesn't that by definition mean that nothing has broken? No. No, it doesn't. What it means is that as soon as you turn on the engines, everything falls over and collapses. That's what it means. <laughs> But, you know, we came close that turn. We did actually come close, so it's time to just try again. Let's, let's uh, actually, let's add on six parachutes this time. <laughs> six, way too many. Just to, you know, just to try and uh, lower that speed so we have to slow down a bit more. Turns out there's actually a sort of optimum parachute level where the more you slap on there, it doesn't help at all, which is not surprising, actually. Um, there again, air breathing engines not being particularly responsive. So let's add some less parachutes, but more powerful ones, shall we? No, let's not. Let's 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 really really not. <laughs> that won't help. Trust me. I mean, this has actually been a fairly successful uh, uh, testing run. We've been using the same pilot, and he hasn't died once, which is really really good. You know. Generally, in the Kerbal Space Program, a one test means one pilot. <laughs> and that pilot soon has to go visit the cloning vats. Um, but yeah, so instead of using that many parachutes, let's just use more uh, higher quality parachutes. But don't slow down too much or they disappear. And then the air breathing engines start jumping around because they want to and they've had too many sweets. And then they don't respond when you want them to, and things go horribly wrong. But you survive. But you survive. <laughs> so, landing legs. It turns out we need landing legs. You know, let's only have one parachute. That seems like a perfectly reasonable idea. And let's slap some landing legs on there. Oh, wait, no. Having one parachute doesn't seem like a good idea. In comes Bob Kerman, who will be testing for us for the remainder of this <laughs> test. Sorry, Bill. Uh, I hope the cloning isn't too painful. Anyway, let's have three parachutes and slap on some pointless landing legs onto the side. That seems like a good idea, you know? Wobble, oh it's worked, it's, no it hasn't, it really hasn't. Great, okay. Let's have three parachutes and let's, let's have some landing legs that actually touch the ground this time. Wow, this video sped up. <laughs> this is, uh, I think it's about 50 gigabytes. No, no, it's 
surely must be more than that, about 60 gigabytes of video compressed down at four times speed. But it worked, didn't it? That was a bit of a bounce, but that's fine. Uh, the only problem is that we can't actually look at the ground because the ladder's not low enough, but never mind. We can turn on the engines, full throttle, uh, put release, uh, no that's not, what, what's the word? Retract, that's it, retract those landing legs and we can try and get back into orbit. Feeling good about this, we know that the ship of this design, uh, minus the parachute shells, minus the ladder and minus 0.3 kilograms worth of landing legs managed to get into a fairly good orbit. So, you know, we have. do we have any reason to believe that this one won't? Uh, yeah, namely the fact that we're carrying 0.3 kilograms of landing legs. I tell you, when, when you're down at this scale trying to create this, it's, oh, it's an engineering challenge, as me six hours ago said. <laughs> yeah, because... Uh, just mainly because it's, it's really, uh, there's no leniency at all. Everything has to be perfect. Your flight profile has to be perfect in order to make each weight, uh, each kilogram wasted count. And believe me, I, you saw all those designs, and there were even more before I even thought about making this video, that I just tried to avoid uh, putting on those heavy landing legs so much, but... In the end, you just have to have them. You need to have them. Um, because you just... They, I mean, the problem is that the big engines, uh, all, the, all the perfect engines for this, are either too big or they don't have vectoring uh, capabilities. Look, 31 kilometers. Ugh, 31 kilometers. So close and yet so far. Um... All the perfect engines for this mission profile are too big so that the landing legs, that is the regular landing legs, can't reach past them. Or they are not vectoring so that MechJeb won't be able to control them instead of using RCS. But, you know, even though it got to 31 kilometers, it's still pretty close in the scale of things. Uh, so let's imagine... Let's just go for a test run, imagining that we're actually, we've got into orbit with this craft, we've put a man across from that original command module into this lander, we've jettisoned the lander, and we're now falling down towards Kerbin. Uh, we reached something like 600 metres a second, which is way faster than the uh, air speed brings us, brings us down to, so it does actually faithfully rec uh, recreate the scenario of being jettisoned from orbit. Unfortunately, it doesn't recreate the scenario of actually deorbiting, you know, slowing down from orbit into a uh, hyperbolic trajectory, a suborbital trajectory even. But never mind, that's an engineering challenge. As I think I've already said for another day, let's get out, let's look around. What's it look like, Bob? Pretty much the same as Kerbin. Okay, let's get back in and go then. <laughs> quick missions, quick missions. Hasty, hasty, hasty. Let's start up the engines, let's retract those landing legs, and let's try and get back into orbit. Maybe we can do better. Of course, the thing is, something in our favour, for once, is that the command module we have there will actually have MechJeb implement implemented. So the flight profile will be perfect. So anyway, yeah. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, please do like the video. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.